And we're back live on the Southland Conference Football Media Days presented by Levy Recognition and Ready. Live from the Hilton Post Oak here in Southwest Houston near the Galleria. Great to be back in H-Town for Football Media Days. Once again, at the top, we showed you the Southland Conference preseason poll brought to you by Jostens. Take a look at it again. Uh, Southeastern, the favorite to win the conference, but right, right behind them are the Colonels from Nichols who received four first place votes. All right, we continue now with a preview of the Nichols Colonels. We'll hear from head coach Tim Rebo in just a moment. But right now, let's take a look at the Colonels. All right, that's a look at the Nichols Colonels. Uh, take a look by the numbers. Head coach Tim Rebo back for a seventh season. You see his record 2018 and 2019 Southland Conference co-champions as well. Starters returning 23, 11 on offense, nine defensively as well. Last year, the Colonels were four and three, three and three in conference play. They were set to open their season September 4th on the road against Memphis Conference opener against Houston Baptist. All right, let's please welcome to the stage, talk some Colonel football. Pleasure to be joined by the head coach, Tim Rebo. Coach, good to see you again. I know you're excited to get this uh, season off and going here pretty soon. Yeah, good. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's hard to believe already uh, seven seasons getting up here and doing it, doing it again. And to represent Nichols State University, quite an honor. And uh, I still pinch myself every day that I get to get up and go to work at uh, such a great university in, in the state of Louisiana. And uh, Jay Clune, our president, done a tremendous job. He's uh, changing the face of our campus. Our athletic director, Jonathan Terrell, uh, who's here with us today, uh, is just doing some great things in the athletic department. Uh, our, our SID staff, Jamie's here, uh, Bustos and Jay Sullivan, they do a great job of, man, it, it was a tough spring. Those guys really put in uh, triple time the things that those guys had to do to get it. So my hat's off to them. Uh, P.J. Burkhalter is, is here representing us, uh, our offensive lineman, along with Jair Joseph, uh, our right tackle offensive lineman. And, and could not ask for two finer human beings to, to be representing uh, Nickel State University also. So pleasure to have them. You'll get to meet them a little bit later. I'd like to start off, too, uh, hats off to uh, the staff that I think is one of the finest staffs in the country, the coaching staff. Um, continuity is the word that I, that I like to use a lot with our staff. And, and I'm going to say it again going into, but six of the nine original staff members are still with us uh, when we got here seven years ago. Uh, both offensive coordinator Rob Christofel and defensive coordinator uh, Tommy Rybacki. And you just can't put a price tag on how valuable that is for our guys to have uh, that stability uh, in, in, in those rooms and those men leading our, our team. It just can't say it enough. Uh, Brian Wallace, Lee Roussel, Sean Murphy, and Russ Gisclair are the other four that have been with us the whole time. So those guys are, are great leaders of men and do a great job uh, in, in knowledge of football and learning and teaching, and, and that's what this game is all about. 
Uh, Marcus Lovings is back with us uh, after a year off. He's, he joins the staff back. Lionel Stokes uh, will now coach our cornerbacks. And uh, Tylen Martin will be our new running backs coach who's joined us for the first year. Uh, we also, also have a new strength coach. And, and I know just in, you know, in riding over and talking with PJ and Jair and uh, the last couple of weeks and then listening to them, they're really excited about Frank Bourgeois, uh, who joined us this summer. He's, he's making a big impact uh, in those guys, not only in, in, in the strength and conditioning part, but just in their lives and messages and the things that he does is uh, tremendous. Uh, so we're, we're excited about that moving forward. Uh, getting to play uh, in the spring was, was really, really, we were excited about it. Uh, you know, there was a lot of hesitancy. Uh, I, I know uh, Brad talked about uh, what they did. Brad, we had fall ball, we had spring camp and all of that stuff. It was, it was all exciting. But, you know, there was still a, a little bit of hesit hesitancy, I think, o over uh, in December. Hey, are we going to still get to play? You know, is this really going to go through? And, and once we started uh, fall, uh, spring camp in January, it was as normal as it gets. I mean, our guys know we had the meeting schedule. We, we had practice. Uh, the only thing different, we probably started school a little bit early, so you didn't have as many uh, camp days as you would like to have. But our guys knew uh, that a season was on the horizon, uh, and they were preparing like, like normal. It was. And I, I remember uh, game week, the first game week, uh, where those guys were super excited. It was, it was normal coming and preparation and uh, getting the tickets for their parents and their, and their grandparents and their friends to come to the game. Uh, that was really, really uh, exciting to see. So to, to get to play seven games in the spring instead of 15 days, uh, really, really gained some valuable experience. Um, I think we had some guys that stepped up and played, uh, some young guys that maybe not would have played if we would have started and played in August and September. Uh, but those guys were, had a semester under their belt. They had those practices, practice days we had in there, uh, and they contributed. We had over you know, probably 12, a dozen uh, um, guys contribute, young guys, that probably we were not counting on at that time. So that, that was good to see. But we, we, gained, you know, we all want to win the national championship. We all want to win every game. But uh, we, we did learn a lot about ourselves that I think um, by playing those seven games, that's going to help us moving forward. We, we always continue to grow, and I think this, um, you grow at times when things are not easy, okay? And, and when you have challenges is when you grow, okay? Because when things go easy, you, you, not, you don't continue to keep learning. I just, it's just something that happens. So uh, we had some, some things that didn't go our way. We, we were a very inconsistent football team, I thought, in the spring. Uh, we, we started off really, really hot, and then we didn't finish strong at the end. And that's something that our guys know and that we got to get back. And uh, we took a week off after we finished those seven games, uh, and those guys were ready to get back to work. We started doing some little team building and team bonding exercises before the guys went home. In, in May, and they came back in June. And I'll tell you this right now, June and July has been, and, and the question you get asked, how does it come back from a, from a spring season? June and July has been really normal. It has been like our normal June, uh, uh, June and July's in the past with the running and the conditioning uh, and, and the meetings and the walkthroughs that you're allowed to do. Uh, that's been really, really normal. I think the interesting part is going to be once we get to um, August and fall camp that we have to be smart coaches because there's going to be a fine line between uh, getting our guys ready to play and, and, and having to play a 12-game season starting in September and um, preparing them and getting them to go, but understanding they just came off of a seven-game season. So we'll do some things a little bit different uh, when we get to that camp. Um, I, I really like this team. I like the direction that we're going. Um, I, we, we got some leaders on this club. Uh, that are leading us and in in guiding us in the right direction and some things that we have. We, I think we got some talent. I think we got some depth. Uh, we have 25 uh, juniors and seniors, and then we're, we're really loaded uh, going back to sophomores, and now we have this super freshman class that we have because you have a red shirt freshman class. We had last year's freshman class, and now we added this year's freshman class to it with everybody getting um, – uh, another another extra year. Um, if you look at you know every year, um, 
you know, coming here for the seventh year, you get, get picked by the media and by the uh, SIDs and everybody. And, and we've been picked anywhere from the top, and we've been picked on the bottom. And, and, and each year is different, and you learn something different about yourself each year. Um, I can remember when we were coming here the first year in the bottom and looking up over at the top, and that was our goal to get up there. Uh, and then we reached it. And then sometimes things change along the way. And, and those first couple years, man, we went out, and, and to say this, we, we were the hunters. You know, we, we were hungry, and we, we went to get after people. And then all of a sudden, you know, you get to the middle of the pack, and then you get to the top, and all of a sudden you become the huntee. And people, you got the target on you, and people coming for you. Uh, this year we have to get back. We got to get back to being hungry and being the hunters, and that's what we're going to do, and that's what this team's going to do. Um, I, I still believe that the game is won uh, in the trenches up front on both sides of the ball, and uh, we have all of our offensive linemen come back, and that's why these two young men are here with us. So, uh, you know, three all-conference selections, all-American um, up front. Uh, that's where it's going to start with those guys. I like our tight end position. We got some guys um, that, that gained some experience, a couple freshmen that can really play for us. Uh, wide outs with Dejon Dixon, uh, Dantes Costley, K.J. Franklin. Uh, we got all of our wide outs coming back for next year, which is going to really, really be interesting. Um, quarterback position with Lindsey Scott Jr., you know, seven games. It was a transition uh, for him, uh, you know, from Chase 4K to Lindsey. I thought he did a tremendous job. Uh, he continues to lead in that position for us. We really talented at running backs with Julian Gums, who uh, he had a spring that he was, he was nagging injuries, but he fought through it. Uh, he'll be coming back, and we could gain a lot of depth uh, in that secondary, I mean, in, the, in, that, in that running back position. Uh, when you flip it over to the defensive side, uh, up front, we were not as good up front last year as we had been. Uh, and I think that showed overall in defense and giving up some yards and giving up a few plays. Uh, I like where our guys are in coming back. At that linebackers are valuable experience. We got Hayden Shaheen, freshman, and Tyree Evans played a bunch of ball for us. Elijah Reams, uh, at start, you go back into the secondary. We got Kevin Moore leading that group, uh, Jarius Monroe, uh, Jordan Jackson. Uh, we got a bunch of guys in that back end that gained some experience, and we're going to be much, much better. We played some freshmen back there. We have a lot of experience coming back uh, that's going to help us. You look at the specialists, they're all coming back. Uh, you know, from, from the holders to the kickers to the punters to the deep snappers. Again, uh, that should be a very, very solid position for us um, that, that we're going to move in forward in that. So with, with that, um, Randy, I'll turn it over if anybody has any questions or to you or some things that we can get started uh, to, to kick off the 21 season. You got it. If you have a question, uh, raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. While we're waiting for that, I want to ask you about your new athletic complex. I know that's something uh, you guys are very excited about, the, the uh, Book Vault Athletic Compact, uh, Complex. What's it mean to have a, a first-class facility on campus for you guys? Yeah, we, we are putting the final touches on, on getting in the building. We we'll, should be in it by next weekend uh, before we get to fall camp. Uh, I keep telling everybody, it's, just, it's like Christmas, and you got this present sitting right in front of you, and you can't open it yet. Uh, we're super excited to get into it. but. Uh, Listen, there was a lot of people uh, over the years that, that have been through Nichols, and I tell everybody that, that that's all for them, all the coaches and players who, who have been through there and put in that hard work. Uh, and, and to have the, the state step up and our administration and Trey Bookvault uh, to get that thing off the ground and get it rolling, uh, it's just tremendous. It just you know it gives those guys, those players deserve that, a, a good place to go to work every day. Uh, and, and have a good atmosphere in there, and, and we're super excited, and it should, it should help us for, for years to come. Coach, Richard Dean at Houston Chronicle. You're talking about the complex. A lot of good things going on with the football program. you got some good, talented players. I think this is four straight winning seasons. You're picked second in the conference, and, you know, you're talking about all the, you know, your big linemen and everything. And then the continuity of the coaching staff. I wasn't really aware of that until you mentioned that. But just talk about where the state of the program is. It's got to be. It's got to be love where you're at. How can you? How do you sustain this? That that is, Rich. That's one of the toughest things we talk about: sustainability. How, how you can keep that going. I just I just think if you go to work every day, excited to go to work every day, 
not looking to uh, uh, get the next job or go to the next place, you, you do your good job where you are, uh, th that goes a long, long way. Uh, I joke with our staff about that. We must be paying them too much that they, they don't want to go anywhere else. But uh, we, we have a great working at atmosphere. Uh, we get along with each other. Uh, they do a good job. The families get along with each other. I, I think that's huge, and that says a lot. Uh, and, and I love those guys, man, because uh, what, what they do, I, you know, I, I tell them this all the time, I get to get up here and do this, but, but those are the guys that get it done uh, day in and out, day out. Um, but it, it, it starts to, and, and there's a sign on, 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 on my wall that I say you win with good people, and I really do believe that. And, and every day I know uh, we have good people at Nickel State University. We have good people in the community. Uh, we have good people that, that loves this program. Uh, and that's all I do is I'm just driving this bus, but, but those are the guys that, that get it done. Uh, great administration who cares, uh, and, that, and, and when you have that, you're going to have success. Coach Robert Kelly, Tech Sport Publications. What do you see as your biggest challenge this year? You've talked about a lot of the positive aspects going in. You certainly do, but what do you think is your biggest challenge is going into this season? Uh, I think from a, from a football standpoint, uh, the challenge would be uh, we, we got to still continue to grow as a team. And I think some things that we didn't have, maybe some right chemistry last year, I think that's something that we got to be able to do. Um, we got to get better uh, offensively protecting the football. I think that was a, a big uh, contention for us last year. We turned the ball over. I thought we had more penalties than we've had in the past, in, in the previous years. Uh, those are some of the challenges that we got to do. Um, uh, to, to get better as a football continue. Every team is different. E even though we have all of our guys coming back, you have a, a, a few new people mixed in there. Um, so early on, we got to get some of these young guys uh, on board on how we're going to do things. That's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Um, I, I don't think uh, it's going to be as big of a deal as people talk about You know, playing seven games, coming back and playing in, in those 12 games, because I think we're going to be smart coaches and we'll have them ready to go. All right, we'll come back in a moment and talk about the uh, Colonel's schedule as they get ready for the new season. Right now, uh, we're going to toss it over to Matty Morris standing by with a couple of Nichols players. Matt? I'm here with a couple of the unsung heroes of the offense, senior offensive linemen, P.J. Burkhalter and Jair Joseph. Jair, for you, you guys are returning all five members of that offensive line. What confidence that, does that provide you going into this upcoming season? Um, like Coach Lee said, he do a great job with us um, being together, playing as a unit. So we don't have much to worry about when you have our fellow All-American. You have no choice but to be great. So I kind of try to pick up some things he may do. And Coach Lee, like I said earlier, do a great job with us, just getting us prepared for certain situations. Um, not knowing our specific position, but knowing all five positions. And that's big for our room. PJ, for you, you've been a member of this team for the last five or six years. You mentioned that you're a super senior here. What has it been like being able to see just the progression and how, how tight this unit has been to be able to be so do dominant on the rushing game? I think for the offensive line room, uh, we leave our egos at the door. We, um, we high character guys who love each other, work hard, um, and we just always around each other. Um, we always watching film, always hanging out. And um, I think that's the biggest thing is our chemistry and how we, um, how we work with each other, so yeah. Jair, we mentioned that your guys' offense was dominant, led the conference in rushing yards per game, ranked third nationally. You have three of your top running backs coming back this year. Can you speak a little bit about, you know, quarterback Lindsey Scott, Julian Gums, just being able to block for those gentlemen and what they can do for the team? When you have those guys in your backfield, it's kind of easy because they are playmakers. They can make plays at like any time. So like blocking for those guys, pretty easy because they're explosive. Like then we got guys outside like Dante S. Costley, KJ Franklin, All-American Dijon Dixon. It makes our life easy to run the football. PJ, you have gotten a couple of accolades for yourself, two-time All-American. What would you like to see the team accomplish as a unit this year? Uh, I think for us, the team is it's been more consistent uh, throughout the, uh, the season. We have some uh, times in the season where we face adversity, and then um, I think, uh, like Coach Rubo said, uh, taking care of football, uh, less penalties. But the biggest thing is consistency and staying together. 
And they mentioned also just the consistency that you guys have had in coaches throughout your guys' experience. What can you attribute to your offensive line coach and what he's been able to help you guys do the last couple of years? Um, protecting the ball, um, limiting turnovers, being disciplined up front, and just having, like being a smart football player, he's helped us with that. Um, just having fun, like being around each other, like it's a brotherhood in the office line group, just like competing every day with each other, trying to be an All-American one day, uh, just following, just following his footsteps, really. Like just. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. We wish you the best of luck this season, and we'll wrap it up with Coach here. All right, Matty, appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Uh, wrapping up here the last couple of moments with uh, Coach Rebo. And, and Coach, you got a couple of big offensive linemen over there. you got a bunch of playmakers, but you, you brought these guys to represent your program today and the job they've done and Coach Roussel has done for your, your staff, on your staff. Uh, what's that mean to have these guys here today? Man, I tell you, when you, when you just listen to them and, and uh, when you have guys like that, it makes your job easy because they now send the message mm -hmm. uh, to the team. Uh, and, and, he, and, and when you listen to PJ, he's right. Uh, chemistry, uh, those guys have it in that room, that offensive line. It doesn't just happen that way. You know, it, 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 Coach Russo does a great job of those guys. Um, the, the, only, the only issue I have is, is uh, feeding those guys. You know, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe next year I might have to bring some smaller guys instead of bringing those. Get ready for the trip back, uh, <laughs> back home, huh? Uh, hey, want to look at your schedule real quick, if we can. We'll pop that up. Uh, you're opening with a couple of uh, SBS pro FBS programs, Memphis and uh, Louisiana as well. Talk about what that means uh, right out of the gates, these two programs. Yeah, that, great challenge for our football team. Um, I always say going in early like that, you, you play some games and you really don't know who you are. Well, we're going to have to find out who we are right away. A uh, good challenge for us to go to Memphis, and then uh, we should have a great fan base heading down the road to Lafayette. Uh, in week two. Very good. Tim Rebo, head coach of the uh, Nichols Colonels. Great to see you again. Talk some Colonel football. I know you guys are looking forward to a new season. It'll be here. Camp's going to start and uh, you'll kick off this new season. Great to see you. Best of luck this fall, coach. Okay. Thank you, Randy. All right. We're going to take a break on the Southland Conference Football Media Days presented by Levy Recognition and Ready. When we come back, the McNeese Cowboys are up next. Stick around.